Hello, this is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquay, the head pastor of Living Streams, and I'm bringing this special message to uh, Living Streams members. Now, you know, we're getting social media friendly, and we're now trying to communicate our thoughts and the heart of God towards um, humanity through the channels of technology. And I believe that this one will be a big blessing to you. There's a story in the Bible that is so powerful and yet so amazing, and not just powerful, but amazing. Now, I'm talking about powerful in its efficacy, and it's amazing in its um, uh, the, the, the level of, of, of like, wow, the wow factor of it. I'm going to talk about a, a particular lady called Anna. I mean, in First Samuel chapter 1. First Samuel chapter 1 gives a very bad description of Anna. Not bad in a negative way, but bad in a, in a serious way manner she was in trouble and the trouble was that she was barren and the bible says something that was that was very amazing the lord had shut her womb so her barrenness was not as a result of a mistake that she had made or something that was in her past or something that could have been related to her past but it was an act of god you know sometimes when things happen people begin to uh, whose fault was it what did you do yesterday and all those other things now that's where we have the problem sometimes you need to understand that jesus christ when he was uh, one time there was a man who was born blind the bible says he was born blind and then they said is it the mother's fault or the daddy's fault and then they said no it's not the mom's fault not the dad's fault but this one is for the glory of god so sometimes there are things that god wants to use it to paint a picture god wants to use it to teach a lesson god wants to use it to uh, uh, bring forth a principle, a principle that will stir faith, a principle that will stir courage, and a principle that will raise your hope and let you know that God is still in control in the affairs of humanity. And though today you might be desolate, there is always a way out for you. Now the story of Anna begins with sadness. Then the Bible said she goes into the temple as a result because she's barren. Her, her rival, who they were all married to the same man, Elkanah, her rival used to provoke her soul and make her very sad and make her very uncomfortable at the temple, at the house of God, at the place where there is joy. Because the Bible says, in your presence, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. So can you imagine this? At this woman, she goes into the house of God and she's always weeping. She's always crying. Then Anna did something that was very, very powerful. She walked into the throne room of God. She walked to the temple, raised the prayer. And the prayer that she prayed was a very powerful prayer. He said, God, if you give me a son, I will give you a priest. If you give me a son, I will give you a prophet. Now, Anna said something. Now, you are barren. You haven't had a child before. And then you stand to tell God that if I bring you my son, you know, if you give me a son, if you bless me, if you increase me, if you multiply me, if you give me a breakthrough, if you open up the whatever is going to come out fresh from my womb, whatever is going to open the matrix of my womb, I am not going to take it. I'm going to give it to you, God. Now that is a powerful principle. Now someone will say, that is a daft statement to make. You have cried, you have, you have begged God, you have prayed, you have fasted, you have you, you, you've gone an object of public ridicule and all those other things. And then when the, when the product comes, when the, when the, when the uh, rewards of your sweat and tears, when they come through, that which opens the matrix of the womb, the first fruit of your womb, you are going to give it to God. That is what Anna said. And you know what? I said, this woman must be crazy. This woman must be crazy. This woman must be crazy. Now here is the principle. At the end of she given Samuel, when she gave birth to a son, she took him to the temple and said, this is what I promised God. This is what I said. So you God, take my first fruit. Take that which breaks the matrix of my womb. Take it. That is my first fruit to you. And guess what God did? After Anna left, the Bible said, in the course of time, she had five more. No one can ever be God in giving. Whatever is given to God will be given back good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. But a woman without a child, and now your first child, you are telling God, I will give him back to you. He's yours. I mean, from that day onwards, honest, uh, uh, the child Samuel, 
His genealogy cannot be linked to uh, uh, Elkanah. He can never be ascribed to uh, Elkanah. This is Elkanah's son. No and no and no. What Anna was saying that this one belongs to God. Now this brings to me the principle of the first fruit. Now first fruit is, is first of all an act of faith. Not just an act of faith. Oh no, let me just say first fruit is a command of God. In Proverbs chapter 3 verse, uh, verse 9 and 10. He said, bring the first fruits into the store. Bring it. Bring the first fruit. You know, God commands it. Now, there are four different types of giving. First of all, we have, we have um, the commanded uh, given. God commands it. A typical example of a commanded given is, is a tithe. A tip, and then, then we have the love given, and which is a test of your love. And the love given is love offering. Whatever you love, you give to God. Whatever you love, you give to. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Then we have a, 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 a distance of compassion, a giving of compassion. That is alms given. That you're giving to a brother, you're giving to a sister who is in need. So you give to him. Then we have something we call sowing. Now sowing, it is an act of faith. Believing God for something and then saying to God, when this, this is what's going to happen. So sow in the seed and let it become a, 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 a harvest. Now it is a test of faith. It is a faith given. Now I want to say this, that first fruit is both a commanded and it's a faith. So first fruit comes loaded with two different dimensions. First of all, God commands it. And I just want to read to you a couple of a couple of uh, distance so that you would understand uh, them. First of all, first fruit is a declaration of faith. And faith that God is the source of, your, of what you have. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 10. Exodus 23, 16 and Proverbs 3 and 9. This is faith given. This is a declaration of faith that God it's my source. Now, the first fruit, the second principle I want to establish, first fruit is the first fruit of the first harvest of your labor. Your first month's pay. The whole package, nothing else. That is your first month's pay. The, the month of January's pay. Collecting it and say, God, you have given me a new year. God, this is what I have obtained. As a result of your kindness, as a result of, of your grace upon me. People died in, in, in last year. You're still around. So bring it in and say to God, I appreciate what you have done for me. This is my seed of faith. This is my seed that I am bringing. This is my first fruit. And my first fruit is holy unto you, just like Anna gave Samuel totally. You are also taking your first month's salary and giving it to God totally. The next thing. There is a difference between the tithe and the first fruit. The tithe is a tenth of what you, you have. So imagine a tenth of Samuel cutting him in ten pieces and giving God one. No. But first fruit is the whole, the total, the whole harvest of the month. And that's the, one of the difference. Now first fruit is commanded. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10. It is a commandment of God. Now, so if I give my, uh, my first fruit, what's going to happen to my tithe? My tithe is included in my first fruit. My tithe is included in my first fruit. Now, um, what about if I have bills to pay? And how are my bills going to be set up? First fruit is a work of faith. It's not by force. If you don't have the faith to do it, that's all right. No one condemns you. No, it shouldn't. But first fruit is a work of faith. You know one thing? Sometimes Elijah is going to make a demand on your cruise of oil. First, sometimes God is going to make a demand on your cruise of oil and your cake of bread. He's not doing it to make you hungry. But by the time it finishes, you realize that not only would you have abundance, but your son's life will be saved. Life would also be preserved. So sometimes first fruit is also a step of faith telling God, I'm committing the future into your hands. And sometimes uh, we'll have abundance. Sometimes life is preserved. Like the widow woman of Zarephath's son, life was preserved. Now, how, do, how should I give my first fruit? I give my first fruit with an attitude. It's an attitude of faith and trust. Anna said, I am giving it to you. No problem, I am giving it to you. I am giving him to you. And you know what? It's an act of faith. 
is an act of trust. And then, I just want to end here. First fruits are both mentioned in the old and the new. Now, people will say that Jesus came to abolish all that. Jesus Christ came to abolish all that. That is wrong. That is not right. He said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I rather came to fulfill it. And he said to people, you tithe mean to rule and honest and common, but you neglect the weightier matters of the law also. This is what you must also do in addition to first fruit. So Jesus Christ didn't come to abolish it. He rather tried to encourage us that in doing other things too, in doing this also, do some other thing else. Now, first fruit is a choice. First fruit is something that you, 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 you have to decide. I said it is your whole income for the month of January. That is what it is. And it's an act of faith. We bring it with faith. We bring it with joy. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. And I know there are many errors going on around and many teachings against tithing and all these other things. But the presence, and so some pastors might be afraid to step out and say publicly. But listen, the presence of error doesn't negate the truth. The presence of error doesn't subjugate the truth. The presence of error doesn't oppress truth. That truth must be oppressed. No way. Truth will stand. So those of us who know the truth, we need to truly communicate it to everybody. So this is the principle of first fruit. Well, we're coming to, to the end of January. And we're going into our first fruit. Our first fruit is on the 7th of February. And that is when we come together with joy and then we, we, we give to God and we give to him with a cheerful heart. Believing God that this year it's going to be different. I want to say something to you. The testimonies, and I'm, I'm not jiving you. I'm telling you the stark facts. The testimonies we have of first fruit, life saved, and different, different other things. Um, I mean, powerful visitations of God and powerful manifestations, powerful supply of abundance, people walking into new business ventures and all those things. I'm telling you, make a date with us on our first fruit. On the 7th of February, we're bringing it to church in the morning services. We're handing over our first fruit to God as an act of faith, as an act of trust, and as an act of obedience to God. See you on the 7th of February.